Welcome back to the Charcoal Podcast. I'm Cole Larch, joined by Charlie Preen, and we're going to get into it. This is episode 16. Okay, right away, we're going to go over the picks from last week. Just kind of a short week, because I'm going to the Dyke House tomorrow to watch football. Today is Thursday, and we usually do a podcast on Fridays, some Thursdays, so we don't have we didn't have everybody's picks in. Um, but last week, uh, a lot of a lot of right picks. Um, but we got a new leader, so it's kind of cool. Dawson, a, uh, he took Texas Tech over West Virginia as his lock. That was correct, and his upset was Minnesota over Penn State, and that was correct. I came into the week tied for first. I picked Florida over Vanderbilt, and that was correct. And I picked Appalachian State over South Carolina for my upset, and that was correct. Last week, I picked SMU over ECU, that was correct, and my upset was KSU over Texas, and that was incorrect. Mr. Denning picked Michigan State over Illinois, and that was wrong, and his upset was Northwestern over Purdue, and that was also wrong. Mr. Schaefer picked Cincinnati over UConn, and that was correct, and his upset was TCU over Baylor, and that was incorrect. Mr. Helton picked Cincinnati over UConn as his lock, and that was correct. And his upset was Virginia Tech over Wake Forest, and that was correct. Mr. Christensen took number nine Oklahoma over Oklahoma or Iowa State, that was correct. And his upset was number 18 Iowa over number 13 Wisconsin, and that was incorrect. So standings going into this week, I'm in first, sole possession of the lead at 12 and six. Tied for second, we have Dawson, Charlie, Mr. Schaefer, and Mr. Christensen at 11 and seven. And tied for last, Tied for sixth or last, yeah. We have Mr. Denning and Mr. Hetland at 10 and 8. And with that, we'll get into the wheel. A lot of, a lot of things last week in the podcast I would like to know quickly. We were right there on the state and the country. We said a lot of things that were going to happen about Minnesota, maybe beating Penn State, and look what happened. So yeah. we'll probably get to that in a Top second. Number 11. Dolphins versus Colts. Recap and thoughts. Can the Dolphins pull their season together? You know what? They're going to win two games. and I mean, the Colts really didn't play at the best of their abilities. And coming into the season, people think thought, people thought Colts were going to be one of the better teams in the league. Well, Andrew Luck leaves. And, I mean, everything goes wrong for them as Vinatieri isn't playing well either. Yeah. So. <laughs> I mean, the Colts just had, I don't know what happened in that game, but... For, can the Dolphins pull their season together? I think they can maybe get one or two more wins, mm-hmm. finish four, and what would that be, 12? Yep. So can they pull it together? Probably not, but can they win more games? I think so. Yep. Topic 10. Yes. 10 is 49er versus Seahawks. Thoughts on this one. Okay, so... We now have no one of undefeated teams left in the league, right? Um, Seahawks beat the Niners. Niners were undefeated. No longer. Um, Seahawks, I think, are they showed what they're what they're like. I mean, this, they have they a good team. They did. They do. And I'll give them credit for that because they really pulled together. They were down. I want to say what they twenty one points at one point, and they came back, tied her up, sent her to overtime. So I mean, it was a good game. They're a good team and. They only have one loss in the season, and that really showed that they're a good team. I think, I mean, you look at it in terms of everyone's like, dude, you look at it. The the, the Niners like lost the, lost the game. They, they they screwed themselves like because of what they did. No, the Seahawks screwed themselves. Yeah, they the went Seahawks through. Really they did. went three and out almost. Was it two times in a row for sure? Maybe even three in the first couple drives. They could get nothing going. Mm-hmm. What the Niners did, brought it down the field, brought it down the field, brought it down the field. That's what they Long did. Drives that yes. tired out that defense, and then the offense went out there three and out, and there goes the defense again, and they're still tired from last year. Yep. So I mean, that really affected it. But then I the th- offense pulled it together. So everyone's like, "Well, the Niners and the Niners should have won that game." Well, no, Seahawks won the game. That's yeah. how it is. I mean, that Webster beat us, and the other day, and they, everyone's like, "Webster, or we should have won that game." Well, we didn't. I mean, that's how it's. How it flies, so. Yep. What do you do? Somebody's at the door. We have topic number seven. Seven is class AAA, Dyke House preview, okay. AAA is tomorrow night, late game, last game of the year. AAA is always fun to watch, but this year we have uh, a stat that I seen the other day on Argus, I believe. First time Sioux Falls Public School has not been in the uh, championship in AAA in 
since like the first year, I believe. What are your thoughts on that one? Long time. I think we had a 4-3. No one really expected this to happen. No, it was really uh, mind-boggling, actually. Like, if I would have had to pick, I would have saw Brandon Valley, and I thought Washington was going to – I thought they were just going to be a repeat of last year. I mean, here we are, Brandon Valley and O'Gorman. What are your thoughts What this game here? These, These two teams are pretty cool. If you look at Brandon, obviously we talked about it last week, but their rushing attack is just not even it, – it's unprecedented in the state, and you don't get you don't get kids like that very often. And uh, if, I, if I knew his name, I'd tell you his name, but that, kid, that kid's an animal. And I'm pretty sure yeah. he's a junior from Brandon Valley, but he's yeah. good. I mean, he'll, he'll show out tomorrow night, and he'll be fun to watch, especially uh, – Prime time Friday night, like that. That's what you. That's what you want to see is that kid. That mm-hmm. kid do stuff. But you look at it, and I really have not seen O'Gorman play. I I've seen highlights of their uh, highlights of them um, of their good players, and O'Gorman plays a kind a cool kind of offense where they have a lot of really good weapons that that not other teams can compete with. You you guard this wide receiver, they're going to throw it to their other good wide receiver. You respect the run, they're going to pass it over top of you. This is a really good team. They're balancing. It's like a double barrel shotgun. You shoot them once with a run, they start going for the run. You just throw it over the top of their head, which I mean, is a really good philosophy yes. for offense. I mean, if you can have a good running game and a good passing game, and that's, that's what just, they have. That is just ideal, and that's what they have. But I think this one's going to be extremely close. Yes, I think O'Gorman's going to take it because um, Brandon Valley can't pass the ball as well. That, that's why I think O'Gorman's going to take it. They can still pass the ball. Don't yes. get, don't get yep. me wrong here. But O'Gorman's just got everything going for them. And I have a couple friends that uh, go to Brandon, Brandon Valley, like four friends that go to Brandon Valley, and a couple friends that go to O'Gorman, and I got to talk to them. Uh, unfortunately, my friend uh, Barry Grieve died uh, in a car accident the other day, and we got to get together, and we talked about it and all sorts of stuff. But anyways, the main topic was O'Gorman versus Brandon Valley. And mm-hmm. all the kids were just... They were they were getting their two cents in there. Yeah, I think this one's going to be less than a touchdown, probably a field goal difference yes. if I had to guess. I'm just going to go with O'Gorman, but if Brandon Valley can come out and establish the run, which I have every game, but yes. they need to like over-establish the run almost to like where the teams think, oh, they're just going to pass overhead and just keep running it. But mm-hmm. I think it's going to be within a field goal for sure, and I think O'Gorman's going to take the Yep. Goal. Topic nine. Yep. yep. What are your opinions on the top twenty-five? Okay, the top twenty-five. Where's the top ten? Right. There? We'll just go. We'll just go through the top ten. We have Oklahoma at ten. This is just a weird. This is. I'm gonna run it down one through ten through one, and then we can talk about it. Yeah. Yep. So we got Oklahoma at ten, Penn State nine, Minnesota eight, Utah seven, Oregon six, Alabama five, Georgia four, Clemson three, Ohio State two, and LSU one. Thoughts on the the ten spot? You know, we'll ten run it down here. Oklahoma, they're just they're a better team than they're getting credit for, yeah. as you can tell by the number ten ranking. Like they've lost one game, but that's it. And you look at all these other teams; a lot of them also have also only lost one game. But the teams that they play compared to the teams that say Utah plays, yeah. for Christ's sakes. But I mean. I think they should be higher. I think they should be within playoff contention here. I think in a top six. I think so. I think six is a maybe a little generous. Yeah. I think seven, something around there. Six, seven. Yeah, that'd be all right. But yeah. they they have Baylor this week. Undefeated Baylor. That's where college game day is. I think Baylor's going to get them. I think it, that's going to be a really good game there. But I don't yeah. know. It's going to be it's going to be interesting. Uh, next one we got Penn State at nine. Penn State comes off a loss to Minnesota, and Minnesota is now ahead of them in the rankings for the first time in a long time. Yeah, it's been it's a long time. It, uh, since Penn State was kind of at the low uh, a couple of years ago when they had coaching issues, but that's bef- besides the fact. Um, now ben- Penn State, uh, they have to play Indiana, so it'll be a nice game for them. I think Penn State's going to really gain some, gain some uh, what's, the, what's the best way to put it, some... Just gain confidence, I guess. Yeah, it's, confidence, momentum, yes. something like that. They need to get that to, to re- rebound their season. Yeah. I think they are probably should stay there about an iron yep. in there. Yep. I think that's a good ranking there. Mm-hmm. Next, we got Minnesota, who beats Penn State. Minnesota's got Iowa this week, which is not 
not an easy place to go to and win. So it's at Iowa. It's going to be interesting to see what they can do. Yeah, that that's going to be a really good game there. Um, but should Minnesota be the number eight? I think so. I think so. Personally. But, yeah, we'll, we'll get to this in a second. Yeah. But I think Minnesota, here's Minnesota's path. They got to beat Iowa. They got to win two more games in the Big Ten, which I mean, Big Ten games aren't always easy. They have one home game left, I believe, but then they have to play the Big Ten championship more than likely against Ohio State. That'd be. I'd miss I told it. you last week that they write their own path. They beat Penn State. They beat Ohio State. They're in. You agree? Yeah, I think one hundred percent. I agree too. Um, I think that Minnesota is needs to just make sure that they focus super hard these next three weeks. Yeah, this has got to be the best three weeks of football yep. that you're ever going to play in your they life. they got to row the boat for these next they, three yeah, weeks. Yeah, they really got to row the boat. So, yeah, I think they should stay at the next Yeah. Game. Now we got number seven, Utah. What are your thoughts on this one? Um, You know, it really doesn't make this, this much sense because you look at the teams they've played compared to, I don't know, say, Minnesota LSU or a Minnesota. Even, yeah. And... They might be the leader in their conference, but the conference is not that good. Uh, you, you, see, got, you got Oregon, and Oregon, Oregon's yeah, Oregon, giving a test to Auburn, I guess. So that's about. All. I I could see Oregon up there, but definitely not Utah. Yeah, I think Utah's probably a fifteen. I agree. I don't think they're they're that worthy of that. Yeah, I think they're giving them a little too much credit. I I agree, but. but I don't think that the committee is valuing. And I've seen this. This isn't me saying this for a fact, but I I don't think the committee is valuing. Like big wins, I mean Minnesota, big win. Penn State's four dropped to nine. Minnesota only goes up to eight. Yeah. What? So that's how your ranking's gonna work? And then you move Georgia. We'll get to this in a second. But then you move Georgia up to four. I don't understand that. Yeah, I don't understand how just, Georgia can be at four. Yeah. Anyways, we'll head on to Oregon. I think Oregon. That's where Oregon needs to be. I think that's a good spot for Oregon there. Yep. Definitely the top six. They're right around. Maybe where, even seven. Maybe even seven. Yep. That's where. Oregon, Oklahoma could be interchangeable yes. there, but mm-hmm. that's a good spot for them. Number five, Bama. Okay, so they lose to the number one team in the country. You're going to move them to five. I, uh, what? It just, it'd be different if they lost to a team like ranked 24. Or a South Carolina. Or, yeah, a South the, Carolina. A South Carolina team who beats Georgia. Georgia has one. <laughs> what? <laughs> Georgia has one loss to South Carolina. And so does Alabama has one loss to LSU. And by the way, so um, you're gonna move Alabama behind Georgia, who just lost the number one team in the country, who South Carolina isn't even ranked. I was gonna say, I just want to note this: South Carolina is four and six. So I mean, this is this is unbelievable. What do you mean? I could see Georgia up there, maybe at the six. I'm but, thinking six, seven, eight. Yeah. Somewhere in there. What? I don't think they're they're worthy of the top four. And then we got Clemson at three. What are your thoughts on there? You know, I think this could probably be a good spot for them. I think this is where they end up in the college football playoff. I think they either maybe, end up even, a, maybe even two, too. I was thinking either two or three there. Because the if time. Ohio State loses to Minnesota in the Big Ten Championship, Clemson will go to two, LSU will go to or stay at one, and then we'll probably have Bama three and Minnesota four if, if things roll out for them. Yep. If but, Minnesota wins out, I, I'm seeing them at four. Yep, I could see them at four also. Yep. Then we got Ohio State two. Uh, I think this is where they need to be. I and, think yeah, that's a good spot. And then LSU, that's obviously. I mean, no one can argue that LSU that one. I mean, you can't. Anyways, so to, to rewrite the top ten, we'd say LSU one. Yep. Ohio State two. Yep. Clemson three. Yes. You probably what, what do we say? For Bama four? four definitely. Bama four. Um, probably. I think Oregon has to be out of Georgia. Oregon, Minnesota, and Oklahoma. You get to five, six, yeah. seven. And then from there on, it's just. I don't think Georgia is worthy of of what they're what they're actually at. Yeah, they, they, they got a have? test against Auburn. I think Auburn is gonna. If win. Auburn beats them, Georgia's done for the season. Yeah. And uh, you can't have a two loss team in the college football playoff. That's never happened. I don't believe so. It unless you're like losing to Auburn, who's <laughs> in in a Georgia team. I don't know. It's gonna be interesting to see what they do, but yeah, it'll be it'll be really bad if they lose, and they're gonna be done. Anyways, we'll head to the next topic here. Yeah. Spent a lot of time on that topic, but that's all right. Yeah, that's worthy of our time. And yeah. two weeks in a row that these guys have really been the like, committee. Hey, the committee is confusing me. I mean, the way they've been ranking these guys are just confusing. No consistency. But all right, topic fourteen. Oh, uh, we got high school girls basketball. 
Uh, who would you choose for your top eight players for the MVP Titans? Who would you put at your top eight? For girls basketball. For our girls team, yes. Probably got Emily Fox, Hallie Schmidt, Caitlin Briggs, um, Maria Baker. Daisy Rahanek is yep. five. Mm -hmm. That'd probably be your top five there. but that, That's probably going to be Coach K starting five. But then who do you fill then, in? Yeah, who do three? you put in the fill in? I'd say probably going to play people like... Well, you got Shiloh Tobin. Yep. Would be your Reagan Clues. Reagan. Oh, there we go. Yeah, Reagan Clues. She's probably in the top five there. Maybe. Yeah. And then who um, else do you have? I mean, it, you really don't have anybody else. I mean, that's about your top seven. That's what you want is your really top seven. Maybe. Right? Uh, I don't know. It, it'd be. You would really, in an ideal world, you'd like to rotate eight or nine. Morgan Boyd maybe may be able to get minutes too if she put time in in the summer. So. Yeah. Maybe maybe she can get in there, and get I some think, get some good minutes for Coach K. Yeah. I think he's gonna have a he's gonna have a tough year if he has to start turning to his bench. Yeah. So they get a key injury here yes, or there. Or, or a, be, a foul foul trouble. Foul trouble is gonna be interesting. But. Yep. Okay, here we go. Best one of the eleven B. Best one right here, boys. This is the whole bean right here. Where did eleven B go? It's. Do I have eleven yeah, B? This one right there. Oh. It's just not like. It is. Which one? That one. Oh. That's just not. It doesn't oh, matter. okay. Okay. Never so, mind. Bridgewater Emery, number one. Winner, number two. Kind of how we saw it shaking Two undefeated. Two undefeated. And um, I think that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put an opinion out here that not many people have. And I think Bridgewater should win by 20 or 22. Something in that range. 22, 24. I think I uh, just... Depends on who wants it more. I think Bridgewater is just come out and flat out dominate these guys. I think yeah, Winter. It'll be. Winter hasn't been there in a while. Bridgewater has. Bridgewater's hungry because they lost the last year. I think Bridgewater's going to take it by big. I think it's going to be. I don't think it's going to be big. I think it's going to be close. I'd say a touchdown. And. Last drive. Whoever gets the last possession of the yep. game, I'd say is going to win the game. And it's kind of hard to tell who's going to get the last possession from sitting here in the games tomorrow or today whenever you watch this. Yep. Um, it'll probably be out tomorrow. Yeah, I think it'll be uploaded tomorrow. But I'm going to go winner by a touchdown. And you've got Bridgewater by 20 yep. at least. I got Bridgewater so by 20. Split decision here. Probably shouldn't put any money on it. but Yeah. This is a, this is going to be, if you were, Vegas was betting on this one, it'd be, oh, it'd be it'd all be, over. It'd be all over. The spread would wouldn't say the same for five minutes here, but that'll be a good game to watch. I think that'll, that'll, that'll be the best game. It will. Play. It's only um, only one of two undefeated, so that's cool. Yeah. High school boys basketball, what would you choose for your top eight? So we got Reed Lincoln, Kobe, Brady. Kobe Brady. Um, Seth. Seth probably. Yeah. That round is your top five, I'd say. And then you got players like Thomas Stang. He's a good three-point Nathan shooter. Hone. Nathan Hone, good post. Jordan, probably. Jordan. Steven. I'd say Steven's yep. probably in the yep. top eight before yep. Stoltz, but yep. we got a lot of good shooters yep. off the bench. Like Thomas and Steven, they're yep. good shooters there. But it's a matter of it's a matter of uh, I think it's gonna be We're gonna we're gonna have to see when the top eight or when not when the top eight comes, when the first game comes, which is yeah. like December second or thirteenth I I think. I think it's thirteenth in Gregory. Yep, that's that sounds right. So yep. That about rounds up top eight for there. So, you got bet. seven topics left. Topic three. three. Nine double A. Okay. Double A is a little weird. Um, I mean, you got Bon Home, a one loss team, and Viberg, an uh, undefeated team. I think uh, Viberg. Viberg's going to lose. I think Viberg loses this I game think, to Bon Home. I think Bon Home goes up, goes up to Brookings and says, you know. We're not gonna get beat. It says good luck. Good luck stopping this rushing attack. And yeah. uh, at 145 today, it's gonna be Bonholm all over Viberg early. I think Bonholm's gonna take it by. Shoot, we're saying 20 points here. I'm saying 15, 14, something in there. Something there. Two touchdowns. At least, yeah. Nine B. Nine B. <laughs> Alrighty, nine B. We got Plus Coleman, one. Egan, and Harriet Selby area. I will tell you something. You have to. You're gonna have to remember here. Uh, you're gonna have to go back a little bit. Lenny Schroeder, that ring a bell. Old coach oh, of Canisota oh Freeman. Oh gosh. Yep. Lenny Schroeder goes up to Harriet Selby Air. No one knows this. You go look on the roster and you see 
Lenny Schroeder's on there, and one of the old coaches from Menno Marion, when Menno Marion was decent back in the day, they're both up at the Harriet Selby area, and they got that whole program turned around. Yeah. Harriet Selby didn't really do great during the regular season, and that's why they're a sixth seed. Because they're building. Yeah. That's what you call that. It's a building season right there. Coming and in Harriet the Selby waxes Harding County. My dad told me on uh, Friday night that about these co this coaching change and every all the kids are bu have bought into the system. And what happens? They win by 18 against us. Yeah, you're going to buy into the system when you're winning games like this against the number two team. And everyone, there's people that thought Harding County was going to win the game. So yeah. I think uh, Harriet Selby area will put up a fight against Coleman Egan, but I don't think that they can. They can. I mean, maybe. If you they know? squeak it out, it'll be by two. Coleman Egan's going to miss a two-point conversion somewhere along the yep. line. And that's if they win. Yeah, I think Coleman Egan's going to take this one, though. I think, and yeah. it'll, it'll be a good game tonight. It yeah, will. It will be. 4.30, that's right after school. Mm -hmm. There we go. So, I think Coleman Egan got Coleman Egan by a touchdown. Both yes. of us, right? Yes. And if Selby area, Harrod Selby area would win, it'd be by... That'd be crazy. It'd be about three points. That'd be crazy, though. Topic Number eight. Is the Vikings run defense that much better than the Cowboys run defense? So just to compare here, Dalvin Cook, he had 180 all total yards. He had about 110 rushing, I want to say. Ezekiel Elliott, he put up about 30 rushing yards. I think so, I think our defense played pretty dang well. They played really good against a good rushing attack. And Especially with, with Dak Prescott, Amari Cooper, and you didn't really hear much about Amari Cooper other than that toe tap touchdown. Yeah. Um, Say that type five times fast. Um, <laughs> touch, 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 yeah. Yeah. Anyways, exactly. I think uh, with them three guys in the offensive line that the Cowboys bring to the, brings to the table, it's awesome to, to watch that. Watch them guys do yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, their passing game is just so good, and that's yeah. why we have a little fantasy competition with in Mr. Johnson's class, our math teacher, and uh, I picked Dak Prescott as one of our quarterbacks because I knew that the Vikings run defense. There would have to go into man to man yep. to stop the run, but then once you get that man to man, you got those quick. I don't know how many curls they threw uh -huh. in the game, but Dak Prescott, I want to say it was like thirty for thirty five for three hundred and fifty yards and a couple touchdowns. Yep. But that's because when you play those man defenses, those pat the passing is just it's on point. And when yep. Dak Prescott can really throw the ball in there, and when Dak Prescott is on, their team does good. But what they need to do is they need to establish the run. And that's what they didn't do against the Vikings, and I believe that's why they lost. Yeah. Um, I, I think that the, the Vikings really needed to pull together in these last couple couple months and try to make a run at this thing. Because, I mean, if you were to, to guess who has a better chance of being in the top four, Minnesota Golden Gophers or the Minnesota Vikings? Oh, gosh. I think if... Well, the Golden Gophers, if they go in, do they play this weekend? Iowa. They go to Iowa and win. That puts them top six. I yes, definitely. And then I can't remember. They play a couple more games. I'm pretty sure those are irrelevant, but probably one of them's against Nebraska. That'll be a fifty point blowout. But I mean, hard for me to say. But what do you do? Um, I think Minnesota could really get in the top four if they win the Big Ten championship. Yep. But the Vikings. Or They've unless got, somebody else loses. Again. Unless, unless somebody else loses, too. I mean, that is also possible. Um, nothing's impossible. But I think the Vikings, they have a lot longer to go against mm -hmm. more good teams. Like, I, what they are they? The pack again. They're probably 12 right now. Yeah, something Somewhere like in that. there, and Minnesota's 9 or 8, whatever we just said. So I think Minnesota, the Golden Gophers, have a better chance. But if the Vikings can pull it together, which they have, their defense has just gone up since the season started, and so has their offense. They're finally clicking. And I feel like if they can keep this up for a couple more months, they'll be in the top four. Definitely. I think uh, – I think I agree, yeah. So let's head to the next one. Here we go. Four topics. Oh, we got plenty of time. Perfect. Topic five, class 11A. That's tonight, I believe. That's the night game tonight. Lennox and yeah, Canton. If you would have told me this, I wouldn't have believed you. Uh, Lennox <laughs> squeaked one you. out. Lennox squeaked one out against West Central by one, 34-33. Uh, and Canton beat T area. I'm kind of surprised about this one. So if this doesn't show you. Yeah, we had T and 
It was Del Rapids was yeah. number one, weren't they? We had T and Del Rapids in the championship with Hunter. Hunter even called it too. He said T Del Rapids championship. Yep. Well, neither of them are there now, so what do we do? I think. But um, if this doesn't show the state that Canton should have been an 11B or 11A team last year, then I don't know what does. But yeah. Um, yeah. 11B was just stacked last year. Now, now that you look at it, it's like, oh my gosh, that's crazy. Um, but Lennox Canton, uh, Lennox is gonna put up a pretty decent fight. I think Canton's gonna take it though, because they're just the Verley yeah. kid from Canton's just were too good. Yeah, Lennox squeaked one out. I'm not saying West Central's bad, but they are the number eight seed. They so did beat I mean, the number one team. They the did beat the number one team on what was their home field. Halfway a fluke. I'm just going to say that halfway. Not completely, but it wasn't entirely just because West Central was good. It's just because Del Rapids just laid a turd. Yep. And then they Lennox squeaked one out against West Central by one point. So I think I'm going to have Canton in this game by, I'm going to say 14. Yep, something in there. Topic 2. 9A. 9A, okay. Britton Heckla, Canis, or Freeman. This is what we wanted. Um... I was surprised that Sully Beef didn't put up more of a fight against Kansas City yeah, Freeman. That fun. final score is 56-22. to 22. Um, I think Britton Heckler is going to win this thing. Obviously, they don't have what they had at the end of the season because uh, quarterback and stuff, but still a sad deal. But Kansas City Freeman could pull something out. That's this morning's game. That starts in about an hour 20-ish. About or an hour. yesterday. Yeah, yeah, about an Started hour 20. Started played yesterday, so yeah. but I mean – so that'll be a fun game to watch. Today. That will be a really good, fun game to watch. I'll be watching. I, I hope Canada Soda Freeman wins it, but I bet Britton Heckler takes it. I that's what my first in, instinct is: is Britton Heckler's going to take it. But then I remember how much success Canada Soda Freeman's had in the past and what a program they've built. Yeah. And it would not surprise me if Canada Soda Freeman won, but I Britton Heckler's going to win. Yep. But it would not surprise me if they won. It's just so hard to pick them. Teams are so good. Yeah. It's a matter of really. Like you said, who wants it? Yeah. So. Led to topic six. 11A, or yeah, 11 double A here. Double A here. Huh? This is probably the most weird one. I think Pier TF Ricks and Brookings. Brookings beats Huron by 29, and Pier beats Mitchell by 50. Uh, Pier could have really ran up the score against Mitchell, but they kind of did the same they thing. They didn't. Because yeah. they didn't want a whole another spearfish deal. Yeah. But. They had the, the third stringers in really soon, but yeah. Pier over Brookings by 20. I was going to say about. 30, I'd say. Brookings is going to put in a good fight. I mean, they've been playing all their... That their... line for Brookings is really good, though. I, yeah. will, I will give them that. Yeah. They've been playing in the Dyke House through the entire playoffs, so I think they'll have a little bit of an edge there. Um, but I think Pierre's is just going to... I think they're going to have a crazy crowd. We're going to be there. I'm going to be there tomorrow, and uh, that's going to be a good game to watch because I have some relatives that are there, and well, long-distance yeah. relatives, so, yeah. Here we go. Topic 12, final topic of the night here. Or the day. Colin Kaepernick is doing a private workout with the NFL. Do you think a team will go and get him? I don't think a team even shows up to the thing. I don't think there's anyone well, who cares. There's a. They can't. The NFL can't say who's showing up or how many teams have shown up, but an invitation has been sent out to all 32 GMs saying, if you want this guy, come get him. I think probably the only team that'll get him. Or that'll want to get them. Dolphins. The Dolphins. Mm -hmm. But when you look at it, why would they? I mean, they're already struggling already. No reason to have that much they're, drama they in may, the locker room. They may as well just tank and get a first round draft pick, like the first pick. I mean, I personally don't. I've talked to a couple people here. I talked to Coach Olson about this, our football coach and middle school math teacher. And I talked to Mr. Hetland here, our science teacher. And uh, they both said, why would you want to go out and just get an average guy? Yeah. And that's really what he is, is just an average guy. With a lot of drama. He's going to bring a lot of He's drama. He's going to bring him. a lot of drama to your team. And as a GM, you don't want that. That's I the know. last thing you want. And that's, so, I mean, and that's why uh, things all went downhill with uh, San Francisco back in the day. And I think that teams were like, oh, yeah, we, we kind of want to have this kid on this roster because he was good because he won that one Super Bowl. and. No, not anymore, kid. You, you, you did something that really says screw you to our country. Like, why would you do that? I don't understand. I think 
I'd be amazed if more than ten GMs showed up to this uh, workout deal. Which Maybe five. Basically he's, gonna, he's basically going to do the combine and he's going to have a press conference. Mm-hmm. That's what I've been told is what it is. So I don't think he'll go anywhere. I think it's just going to be a big disappointment to him, and then he's going to have a backlash against the NFL. And yeah, and I'll send a nice tweet out for him. Yeah, but with that, I would like to say one thing quick. Uh, shout out to Zach Mickinen. Uh, he, I got to talk to him a little bit yesterday, and. Uh, Sounds like he might be a special guest on one of our podcasts coming up. So that'd be kind of neat if we could get that. His to flight home is December seventeenth. He said he, he, he said he, he said that he could do uh, sometime that week. I have uh, that'd be kind of fun. If we could do like the eighteenth or something, and uh, yeah. get that when we get out of school. I don't I don't know, but that'd be just great to have him on a podcast that would be and, very good. and talk college football and the bowl games. That's probably going to be bowl game time. So you're gonna that's going to be like that's, right. That's going to be the longest podcast ever is going through every single bowl game and talking about it. So that's going to be like all 50 minutes here. We're going to start right away. And yeah, have we're going to have to. Rooms. We're going to have to get in here and get her done. We'll have to probably do it on a Wednesday so we can get out of lifting right away and get out of, get up here and get going. But I think it'll be fun. And uh, hopefully we can talk a little basketball with him too. And that'll be awesome. Yep. So... Well, with that, that ends the, I believe, I don't 16th. even know anymore, 16th episode. We have, I can't keep track anymore. I'm not saying we've had so much, but I just can't keep track anymore. So that's the end of the 16th episode of this Charcoal Podcast from Cole Larsh, Charlie Preen, and Dawson behind the camera. We'll see you later.